little change in the program. Paul, Paul couldn't make Paul Boudreau. Uh, he took a new job over at St. Louis, and uh, he called me about a week ago and said, hey, uh, uh, we're having a high school clinic. I can't get over there. They won't let me out of this place. The, so I said, oh, great. So um, And Andy had already sent a thing in that he's going to come to the clinic anyway. So he, I got a couple of phone calls, and so I called him back. I said, you coming to the clinic? He said, yeah, I already sent my stuff in and everything. He said, good, you're going to speak. He said, whoa. <laughs> he, says, he said, man, I thought maybe you'd give me at least a year. I said, oh, no, you're on right now. Okay, so Andy played in the league forever. Now, we had him at Chicago when I first got there, and we were so smart that we ended up cutting him. Okay, and he said, fuck you guys, I'm going. And he played two more years. For, two, is it? two more years? Yeah, for, for the Washington Redskins. He said, I can still play. So he went down to the Redskins, and he, he played down the Redskins for a little while. And then uh, he wanted a coach. He got brain damage for all his collisions. And uh, he uh, went to work, I believe, at the University of Virginia as a GA. Is that correct? Right? He GA'd at the University of Virginia. He was trying to learn the coaching ways. And, and then he got on as an uh, uh, assistant uh, line coach down at Jacksonville. And he, he learned from one of the best. I think Paul is one of the better one of the better line coaches in the National Football League. And uh, now, he's the, now he's the the guy, the lead dog down at Jacksonville who's going to talk about uh, the different pass protection schemes and how to protect the quarterback, Andy Heck. Thanks, Bob, and uh, really, thank you, Bob. Um, I was very intimidated when Bob called me and said, hey, instead of just sitting there and taking notes like you did for the last two years, I'd like you to present. And uh, I said, I'll do it. Uh, I feel like I owe you big time on this thing, and, and, he, and you're breaking me in here early. I haven't even got a year under my belt as a line coach in this league. Uh, but I, it's, it's a big time honor for me to have been asked to do this. Uh, to follow uh, some men that I have a lot of respect for. Um, throughout my career, I was very lucky to have had some great line coaches, and I want to mention a few of these guys. Um, it's also a lot of fun for me to be here, see some familiar faces. Uh, I was able to catch up with my uh, buddy from University of Virginia, Brett Sawyer, who's now at Lehigh as the offensive line coach. He and I we're slugging it out there in the trenches as grad assistants at UVA when I was trying to learn how to be a coach. We had a lot of fun. Uh, Brett's a young guy, recently married, and uh, has a young child. And I remember talking to Brett shortly before his wedding. I said, Brett, she's a great gal. Let me tell you something. You will never know, you never knew true happiness until you get married. And then it's too late, OK? <laughs> he, he got him a good one, though, OK? So it's fun to see him. I want to take a second to uh, introduce uh, my partner in crime here. Alfredo Roberts is our tight end coach, traveled with me from Jacksonville. Uh, Alfredo just became a better coach. We drafted a tight end in the first round. Mercedes Lewis from UCLA. We're both very excited to have him along. Alfredo played in the league as well, was drafted by Kansas City, and was also with Tony in Dallas. Uh, I mentioned Tony. Uh, Tony has been terrific to me. I was fortunate to play for him for five years. I played for him in Chicago. I had him as my coach longer than any other coach I played for. And uh, in uh, 95 and 96, Tony uh, had us, and we, and we led the league in fewest sacks given up for those two years. And Tony was a great teacher of pass protection, a great teacher of angles. And for that, I appreciate it. And he has also been very helpful to me as I'm beginning my young coaching career and talking things through. Juan Castile, first time I met him was in the early 90s. He was out in Seattle with us, helping us out. And he may not remember this, but he affected me in a big way. Juan, at the time, was Texas A&I coach. He was working with us as an, a summer camp uh, intern. And he was just one of those guys. You could sense it today. One of those guys, you respect him. Something about Juan, you respect him right off the bat. You know, sometimes these guys come into camp, they're helping out coach, you're hardly aware they're even there. Juan's jumping in, he's doing the work. You know there's something about this guy. I hung on every word he said. 
okay? And I remember he came up to me one day and he said, man, Derek Brills is having a great camp. Man, you know, Brian Millard's having a great camp. And uh, I wanted him to say, you know, you're having a good camp, but he didn't. And, uh, you know, as, as players, you hang on every word a coach said, and you look, you're looking for that approval, you know, something to build you up. But so what he made me do when he didn't mention that I was doing a good job, I was busting my ass every day because I wanted Juan, because I cared about what he thought, to say, did a nice job today. Okay? For me, getting that approval from a coach, you know, you talk about pro athletes, they're really no different from high school athletes uh, in many ways, and then college athletes. All they want to do is win, do a good job, and have someone recognize they did a good job. At least that's the way it was for me, you know. It meant more to me than the money to be able to win, know I kicked the guy's ass, and know that my coach thought I did a nice job. So Juan uh, was big to me uh, early on, and I've enjoyed uh, having talks with him over the years. Juan talked about a lot of coaches uh, who I've been very fortunate to have played for. Uh, he mentioned Howard Mudd, the incomparable Howard Mudd. I was fortunate to have him in Seattle. He taught me about the concept of losing ground to gain position. Uh, I had Hudson Houck, one of the finest teachers there is in the game. So thorough, so exact. There was no gray area with Hudson. Really enjoyed him. Okay. Then I went to Washington, and I had Russ Grimm. One of the things I liked about Russ Grimm as a former player was, you know, he brought that toughness, that mentality that we all want our linemen to have. He took on a lot of the traits of his college line coach. Also, my college line coach, Joe Moore. Okay. We heard Juan talk about Joe. I'm telling you, this guy if you haven't met him, was one of the all-time greatest. Greatest human beings, greatest line coaches. Very fortunate to have played for him when I moved from tight end to tackle. He came to me. I was playing tight. I was a three-year starter at tight end. He said, hey, uh, you know, you're not very good at tight end. And uh, <laughs> he was our, our new line coach, and he said, but I think he'd be pretty good at tackle. If you want, you come play for me. Now, at that time, he had just come to us from Pittsburgh, uh, and, of course, he had all the All-Americans, the Russ Grimms, the Bill Freilichs, uh, the Mark Mays, and on and on and on. I think at, at one point, it may even it still hold up, every starter he ever uh, coached in college was drafted. So I said, shoot, yeah, I want to play for you. Uh, I don't want to be some crap tight end. So I went down to the equipment room. Nothing was ever said. And I uh, switched out my jersey and started sitting in Joe's meetings, and it was great. One of the things Joe would say, and then Russ always said, is, hey, don't make magic out of it. It ain't fucking magic, okay? Just go block them, all right? So he taught us techniques, muscle memory, repetition, repetition. For that, I'm very thankful to Joe. Uh, while, while, while I was at Notre Dame with Joe, of course, our head coach was Lou Holtz. Lou taught me great respect for, for Notre Dame, for college football. And one thing he taught us, okay, was that, uh, hey, we're at a place, uh, college, we're here to learn gather facts, okay, but it's a place of faith. He taught us there is a distinct difference between fact and faith, okay? It's a fact that we're all here gathered in the hotel lobby listening to the clinic. It's a fact that the uh, Steelers are the defending Super Bowl champs, but it's faith that leads me to believe that you want to hear what I have to say today, okay, faith. All right, so let's get started with what I want to talk about, protecting the quarterback. Protecting the quarterback. Juan did a great job talking about the techniques. Okay, go ahead, Fred. I want to talk about just the schemes. Okay, the schemes that we're going to do. I'm going to give you the uh, rules and the techniques. Go ahead. Okay, the, the assignments and the techniques of these things, and then some of the adjustments that we're going to make versus various blitzes. Okay, the protections we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about basic protection for us. Basic protection is uh, we've got four down in the mic. Okay, so when I refer to basic, we're saying four down in the mic. Slide protection is now we've got four down, and we're going to slide to the will. Okay, and when I also talk about slide protection, what I'm saying is the front side tackle is going to be big on that end. So we're sliding to the will. The front side tackle staying big. He's got that end. He's not turning it down. We get to turn protection. Okay, now he is down where it's full gap integrity protection, okay, and we're still turning back to the will. And then, if we have time, we'll talk about some of what I call sell the play uh, protections. 
you know, in our slides we have some play actions. When I say sell the play, where we say run pass, you know, 50 gut, okay, whatever the play is. We're running the play and then pulling up and throwing the ball, okay? Uh, basic protection first. Uh, let's talk about what do we got here. We got six man, okay, six man protection where we're going to either scat strong or scat weak. We've got seven man protection, okay, where we'll either do that. We, remember, we've got the mic where we've got two backs in the backfield, okay, or we can use a back and a tight end. And then eight man protection when we want to max it up, okay, for whatever reason we think uh, it's an advantage check, okay, we've got 10 guys near the box, they're pressed up outside, we want to max it up and go deep, or we just want to get out of a bad play. Okay, so let's start with scat strong. Okay, scat strong. Okay, remember, we've got the mic. Let me get my pointer. We've got the mic, and back's got the will. So front side uncovered, okay, he's going to be dueling out, one to two. So here, we've called the mic linebacker, front side tackle, is dueling out. Of course, if that Sam linebacker were to come in, get in the line of scrimmage, he would squeeze on him. Okay, now in this type of uh, uh, situation, we'd be hot off a of one. Sam's hitting it, we're hot off a of one. Okay, you can see here in the little inset where Sam's coming into the A gap, we're squeezing it. All right, now here's another idea, something you may want to do. We did this in Chicago when I was playing for Tony. Okay, again, we've called the Mike linebacker. Week back has got the will. We've called the Mike linebacker, but we're going to take the tackle off of the duel. Okay? As a tackle, as a player, I appreciated that. I said, Tony, man, I got to block Simeon Rice. I got to block Derek Thomas. I, gotta I don't want to have one iota of consideration for this Sam linebacker. You know, can't we handle it in here with the inside? And we did that. So we came up with some sort of R word, whether it's Rip or Ron or Rambo, whatever your R word would be. Here, we know that us three, talking about guards and center, are handling our mic to the Sam. Okay, so Sam at B, boom, they're going to set accordingly. Now, the center, of course, he's going to post. He's got that tilt. He's going to post them. Okay, he's ready for a spike. He'll be able to game this thing off. Now, remember, we called the mic. Okay, if the mic, for whatever reason, hit it backside, then we all have to be aware of what he's doing. Okay, we have to know who the callbacker was, where he's headed. Okay, so he heads backside, then we got to start banging it back. He was the call. All right, now in this case, you can see if we've called him and we've made an R word, we've taken a slide principle and inserted it into our basic protection. Now the tackle's off the duel. It does, in fact, take two to be hot. Okay, we're going to pick up Sam at B. We're not hot. But over here, Sam at B, that end's going to make us hot. Okay, now how far can we take this thing? Next picture. Before I get to that point, let me make this point. See what we've done here with the Sam linebacker. We've just walked him out of the bubble. We put him onto the line of scrimmage. What we've done, we've given the quarterback the ability, okay, or the center, to take the point from the Mike linebacker and say, you know what, there's a compelling reason to make Sam the callbacker. Let's go to him, okay? We've got safety rotation. We know this team's bringing Sam. Let's come off of this mic. We'll make Sam the callbacker. Okay, and what that does to the back now is it takes him from just his will to he's got one to two on the mic. One to two on the mic. All right? Now, from the dot, if Mike comes front side, yeah, that's tough to get there. Quarterback understands this problem. If we're in shotgun and the, mic's off, and the back's offset, okay, I'm feeling better about him getting to that mic if he should come. But we've made him the callbacker because we feel like there's a compelling reason. He's the guy that's coming. We're just going to slide it right to him. Okay, when I was in Chicago, we would actually pop the center to him. Okay, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to present to you some of the things that I've done as a player, some of the things that uh, I've seen uh, done in working with a guy like Paul Boudreaux. I should have mentioned Paul Boudreaux at the start of this thing. Now, Boo is the guy that's teaching me how to be a line coach. Okay, so I owe him a big uh, debt of gratitude. Yes, sir. Okay. We start with our center making the calls. Okay, we have Brad Meester, guy from Northern Iowa, terrific player. He was a starting guard, moved to center. He's gotten very good at making these calls. But 
Our quarterback is very sharp. Of course, Byron does a great job. If he sees something that the center hasn't seen, he also has calls he can make. He knows the line calls. He can make the same call for us. So we start by taking that off of the quarterback's plate. I know some teams, quarterbacks are doing it right now. They're excellent at it. They're taking it off the center's plate. We, we've started with our center doing it, but we listen to our quarterback just the same. He make the same call, the same, you know, Ron call, whatever it was. Okay, so now we've made the compelling reason. Next picture. Okay, here we talked about sliding to Mike and Sam with the inside three. Where's the cutoff? Okay, now in the past we've done this where uh, it's, he's got to be plus. The Mike's got to be plus in order for us to kind of do a mini slide, a mini sort. Us three got them the most dangerous of them. With Tony in Washington, and I really like this idea, we said we can take it, take it, take it, take it all the way till he's zeroed up. Okay? We can go ahead and do that mini slide as long as he's at least zeroed up. Now, once he gets backside, okay, there's no R word. It's now a solid. Solid would be the call. Okay? So now we've got the mic. Back's got the will. Okay? We've got the mic. Back's got the will. Now the front side tackle is back on a duel. But what's happening? Okay? He's backside in a guard bubble here for a reason. He's coming backside. Okay, we've made a solid call. Now the quarterback knows on a solid. It takes one to be hot. Okay, and where do we do that? We did it when he was backside. Okay, got some more pictures for me. Here you go. Okay, now we just flipped the protection. We're still scat strong. Okay, uncovered lineman has the duel. We've done this uh, where we give a gone call, an AMF call. Adios, mother. Okay, he's popping out. Now the tackle knows. His guard's popping out. Okay, he's got a tight five. He's going to inside set that. He doesn't have a guy in the hole uh, right there when we're popping a guard. So he's got to take away any inside move. Now, when we've done this, we're eyeing one to two, okay, inside out. Sam's coming. It's a turn it and trap him, okay? Now, I've done this as a player, uh, and I will say that in Jacksonville, we are primarily a slide team. We are not so much a basic team, and so I tend to favor slide principles, and I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, you can see on the backside, I've said alert heavy. We've got a backside, uh, a weak side back handling the will. What we're talking about heavy is now the will walks into the line of scrimmage. Okay, he's an A-gap threat. He's in the A-gap where he can jump all over that quarterback's kitchen. All right, so we're going to jump him and put the back on the three technique. Okay, that'd be a heavy. I'll talk to you about an alternative to that here in a second. Next picture. Okay, now you can see instead of popping the guard on the duel, we just do a little short fan. Okay, now us two are going to deal out the two most dangerous of these three. Okay, and I, I probably would favor doing this short fan business. I like it. And so we take a little bit of a vertical set. We slow it down. Okay, if that end comes out to me, I'm going to try and gobble him up if I'm the left tackle. Try and gobble him up and block him. Okay, but I do have to set with some depth because if Sam's hitting it, I've got him. Of course, if Sam's hitting it, we'd be expecting the end to be coming to the guard. Now, guards, you're fanning out to a guy who's all the way out over the tackle. Okay, common mistake, oversetting him. Okay, this guy's coming at you. He's going to be thinking 99 times out of 100 about beating you inside. We've got to lay inside. So you're fanning out to him. Okay, that end comes to you. Say they bring in Sam, and here comes the end of the three. Uh, spike into what would be a three. Guards, don't overset them. Okay? They want to beat you back inside. Big time problem. Okay? Now, in both, whether you're popping, okay, or whether you're short fanning, again, it's a short fan, we would like, okay, our guard, if nothing's coming, in other words, they're just rushing the end, we would like him to come back and we say, break the nose's ribs. Okay? So the center, he's got a tough job. He's manned up. Okay, we're short fanning, okay, nothing's happening as far as a, a dog or a blitz. Go back and crack the nose's ribs, okay, help your center out. In all of our protections, we want to set the depth of the pocket with our inside three. We want to be firm setters, okay, we're drawing the line right here. Okay, most of our throws are five-step drop, very few seven-steppers, okay, and then we've got our three steps. We want a place for our quarterback to get back one, two, three, four, five, and step up. So we're going to be firm in here. We're going to slow down when we're 
when we're sliding, okay, and we're going to come back and be firm to give a quarterback a place to step up. Our tackles, on the other hand, are setting the width of the pocket, okay? We are going to make them go the long way, okay? We're going to make them, the question was asked earlier, how would you set, or maybe it was last night, how would you set a five technique? I'm going to set them inside, okay? I'm going to set them inside because I'm going to make him go the long way. I'm going to take away the inside rush. Now, sometimes they've got to come inside. All right, well, I've set inside. I can bury that thing or handle the game. Okay, next picture. Yes? Yes, so we'll take the most dangerous. So let's say they do a... If he goes front side A, yes, yes. Now, that could be a problem here. That could be a problem here, all right? Now, what we say is if he aligns backside, we cannot short fan because of that. Now we've got to give a gone call. So we'll go into a game. Okay, you guys are short fan as long as he's head up. Once he gets backside of you, gone. Now the tackle changes his set. Okay, appreciate that question. Uh, Yes, how are we reading this thing? Okay, we're going to take him as they come, take the most dam dangerous. Okay, the tackle, I want his eyes, okay, on the outside guy, perif in the end. Okay, guard, I want him on the end, perif in the mic, and then just take him as they come. Now, they scrape, Sam and Mike are hitting that outside. I, I'm not sure who's going to get there first. We're going to take the two most inside. Good enough for you? Yeah, okay. Uh, here we go. Versus 34 teams, our odd teams, we're seeing more and more of them. We're going to see plenty next year uh, in Pittsburgh and New England and on and on. Uh, we will typically uh, fan to the backside will, okay? You know, just in your mind, think of it as an under front. This, here this guy's rushing to his three, and we'll give the back the jack, okay? Now, we may adjust this a little bit when we get into nickel situations. It's an odd front, okay? And maybe these are little guys out here, okay, and they're in a 3-2. But versus a base 3-4, four, four linebackers, a Sam, a Mike, a Jack, and a Will, will typically fan that, give the back the Jack. Got another picture? Okay, now we get a, a bare front, okay. We'll just make some sort of a five-down call. Uh, I like to call bear, even though sometimes it's not technically a bear. We're covered. We're all three covered inside. Okay, center and both guards are covered. We make a bear call or a five down, a poker, whatever your call would be, and then the tackle is going to set, okay, for the known rusher. Now, technique here for a tackle is set for the widest, okay? Set for the widest. It's a, it's a scat strong, so you've got one to two to three, okay? You've got one to two to three. But set for the widest, this is the guy, okay, that's getting paid the money to come hurts your quarterback. So you better get your ass out there and take him. Now, here comes a Sam, here comes a safety inside. If they're becoming more dangerous, you break it off and you take him. All right, of course, quarterback would know he's hot in that sort of a situation. All right, we got single blocks across the board. Remember, set the depth inside. Okay, we're firm, but the center may want to jelly back, jelly back a little bit to use a Boudreaux term, okay, to handle any games, which we're typically going to get in this bare front. Okay, Fredo. All right, Scat Week. Here we go. Now we are, uh, we're gonna, we got our strong back blocking the Sam. Again, we've called the Mike. Uncovered lineman backside. Here we're going to say that the tackle's uncovered. Has got the duel. Okay? <coughs> go ahead. Now we can replace the strong back in this with a tight end. All right? I like this uh, from a trips formation. Gives us the best chance to know, it gives us the best chance to get that Sam outside and we can we identify our mic. Now all of our uh, call all of our assignments are going to come off of who the callbacker is. Okay, again, the center is going to make that call. 52, 52 is the mic. Okay, now when he does that, okay, the next guy is going to be the Sam for the tackle and tight end. All right, and the next guy backside of him is going to be the Will. That's the guy, of course, that we'd be doing. One thing I learned from Howard Mudd. Hey, this is. Uh, 
football 101 maybe doesn't even need to be mentioned, but as a young player, it kind of stuck in my mind. I always think about it. I mention it to our rookies. You know, well, uh, how do you find Sam, Mike, and Will? And Howard would say, okay, uh, dumbass, the two widest guys are the corners, typically, okay? And the two deepest guys are the safeties. And then anybody else is a linebacker. Well, as a player, that helped me. I'd come up as a left tackle, and I didn't know. Is that a will? Is that a safety? Okay, is that two widest guys are the corners? Those guys are safeties. All right, here's our three linebackers. Middle of the three is the mic. Little thing that helped me as a player. Okay, now here, the tight end slow. He's replaced the strong back. We like to get a chip. Okay, we like to get a chip, and maybe he'd get him out. Okay, we've called the mic. All right, again, 34. Okay, now we've got the dual backside. We've got the short fan going. Here we've got a slow. We're not in a three-by-one. we got Sam in the bubble. Okay, us three, we got them three. Us three, got them three. Okay, now tackle, if this guy's a wide three, he's got to give that guard some body presence. Okay, he's got to give that guard some, but where's our problem? Okay, we got a, a tight end blocking, uh, you know, Mathis from uh, Indianapolis. Okay, so you can't get all involved as a tackle with this three technique. Give him some body presence, but be, be ready to get your ass out there and help the tight end. Now, of course, if Sam's uh, stacked in here or he's becoming a threat into that A-gap or even gets into the A-gap, well, all bets are off. We're squeezing that tight end. You're on your own. We would like to quickly determine that the guard is secure, the Sam's not coming, and then get the tight end's ass out. Okay, tight end, know where your help's coming from. It's coming from the inside, so you can set a little bit firmer on that upfield number, okay, and you've got help inside. Of course, you can't throw a Nolan Ryan no-hitter out there, okay? Here we go. Here's a situation where the Sam's the, uh, excuse me, the tight end is slow, okay, the tight end's slow. Maybe the, court, the center came up and called the Mike linebacker, okay? So now the safeties have rocked and rolled, our will is no longer backed up, well, let's just make us a new point. Now, the, here's a case where maybe the quarterback did it. Okay? Our center could do it also. But he's come up, he's called the mic, the mic backer. We know we're slow in the triangle. The quarterback gives us a, a term, okay, uh, you know, right, 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 let's move the call linebacker one spot to the right. Now we have a new Sam, a new Mike, a new Will. Okay, new Sam, new Mike, new Will. Uh, so there's a mechanic for that. There's a, a, a likely scenario where the quarterbacks, in fact, made the call. Okay, no reason to call him. Uh, we tell our lineman he's not backed up, he's not coming. Let's make him, you know, this safety type out there. Okay. We'll move a little quicker here. Uh, all right, now we, uh, we're alert on the backside. We've got the dual. We're alert to squeeze this thing in the A-gap. We know we're hot off a of will. Okay, of course, we got the mic. Again, sit in the hole. Don't get too involved with the nose. Sit in the hole. Tackle. Understand that you've got inside help. You can be firm on that outside number. Okay, now we're not going to overset him. We're going to make him go the long way, trust me. Okay, but you can be a little bit firm on that outside number as opposed to hand in the sternum. Okay, now if this thing comes hard inside, you're going to hear me say uh, as we get rolling with the tape, don't chase big loopers. Okay, he goes inside, you're going to Maybe get a hand on him, but trust your buddy. Trust that he's sitting in the hole. He knew where the mic was. He's right there over us. We got the triangle. He's sitting in the hole. Whew. End spikes. Just pass him to your buddy. He's sitting there, and we'll game it off. Okay, don't chase big loopers, and trust your buddy. Don't get too involved with the nose. Okay, again, we got a, a why is the strong back. Okay, here's a situation I talked about. Our assignments come off of the mic linebacker. Mike's the call backer. Boom, here's Sam out here. Now we got a rotation. They come into some sort of buzz coverage. Okay, well, the next guy past the mic is going to be the Sam. So here's a new Sam. There needs to be some communication here uh, by the tackle and tight end. Okay, we got a new guy. You'll see our guys on tape sometimes uh, point out, okay, now we're coming in here. All right, to a new Sam. Okay, again, alert squeeze. Now, I may not have mentioned it. Earlier we talked about the heavy block, okay? Uh, we, and we may get to it here on some of these diagrams. Talked about when we have a back, okay, in protection, okay? Uh, go, go ahead and give me another picture. I'll get to that in a minute. All right. So here we're gone, okay, versus the 34. We got the mic. 
You see here five down again. Okay, now on this five down, when we've got the uh, tight end in, rather than put the tackle, and this tight end easily could have been on the line of scrimmage, rather than put the tackle on the big end, okay, uh, one thing I learned from Boudreaux, okay, is it's important, okay, because of, you know, this game here where they sock stunt, bring the salmon side, that we can't pop and then put the tight end on that guy. So we're just going to have to fan it out to that or T.O. it or top it. Okay? All right, Fredo. All right, seven-man basic. Now we've got, uh, we've got the mic. Both backs have got Sam and Will. Okay? Back scan. This is one of our protections, okay? Only one of our protections where we will scan the backs. In other words, from there, linebacker assignment to a blitzing defensive back. Okay? Here we've taken Sam and Will off the line of scrimmage. Okay? We will tell our open side back, okay, if there's no tight end, Please give us some chip help. I don't have my tackle set any differently, okay? But understand that if you're playing Indianapolis and a back is coming for chip help, okay, how will the defensive lineman react? Okay, they will oftentimes spin inside or try to avoid that. Um, so just understand the reaction that you're going to get. Or sometimes a back will do such a great job of knocking that guy, you'll be in good shape on him. He'll bang him, and you may lose him inside. Okay, so we're still going to set inside out on these guys, make them go the long way. Understand you may get some chip help, but don't change your set. Okay? Here's a, a picture of the back scanning. Okay? So here we've three, four rules. We've fanned to the wheel. We've given the back the jack. Okay? And he sees these, ro these safeties rotating. Okay? This is a blitz we'd see from Pittsburgh. He sees the safeties rotating. They're giving us some sort of two fire zone and come in Sam Strong safety, he will scan out of that and pick a DB. Okay, again, for us, only in our seven-man basic protection will we do that. On those scats, we are not scanning the back. Now, he has a form of scat. He's got his linebacker to any DB his side. Now, in my mind, that's different than scanning where we're going coast to coast. So on scat, uh, no scan. Of course, you got your backer to any DB. Now, in uh, two-back basic, we can scan coast to coast. Any questions on that? Scan. Okay. Earlier, here's the picture I was looking for. Earlier, we saw where we had a strong back in, and they heavy blocked it. Remember, Sam came into the A-gap, and the guard squeezed him, and the back took the three technique. Here, I'm showing an example of a squeeze. Okay. Now, here's the idea. You know, as a player, we had heavies, or we called them hards with Tony, whatever your word is, where you know the tackle stayed big, and then we gave the three technique to the back. And then uh, I had to know if I had a back in protection to me, in other words, was it scat away, or is it scat to me? Scat to me, I had to squeeze, scat away, I had the heavy, and then, you know, are we in shotgun? Do the rules change for that? Let me throw this thought out at you. Make them all the same, okay? That's why I kind of like the idea of squeeze them all. In our slide protection, we squeeze a back sky in the A-gap, okay? Squeeze them all. I don't have to worry. Is it shotgun? Is it weak side scat? Is it strong side scat? Is it slide? I'm squeezing them all. Now, is that the best way? Not always. But if it allows our guys to play faster, they're not thinking about it. And maybe it's not a problem for your guys, Ivy Leaguers, okay? But it was a problem for me in that it slowed me down just a tick. It made me think. I don't want to have it to think that much. Boom, let's just squeeze it. Okay, we're reacting, we're playing fast. Throw that thought out there for you. I've shown both ways of doing it. I've done both ways as a player. Both ways work. Okay. Uh, now we've, got, we've replaced our strong back with the tight end. You could do that. Okay, again, Mike's called backer. Let's move through these a little quicker. Okay. Uh, we can put our tight end in the backfield, use him as a strong back. We want big guys and go three wides. Okay, and again, it all comes off of the uh, call backer. Fan in the three, four. Okay. All right, and five down. Okay, again, we're slow, and, and tight end's got to take the big end there. All right, eight man basic. Now, we're, all we've done is we've taken the seven man basic. Okay, we've made the tight end slow, so they're slow on Sam. We've got the mic. Back, uh, weak side back's got the will, 
and the H will scan. Again, for us, this may be an advantage check. We see something, we know when they come into a 10-minute front, maybe it's a, a four-minute play, we're running the clock out, but we know we can take a shot, we'll max it up. So we put the H on the scan. Okay, now if the F has come to the line of scrimmage, okay, he's in the back, he, he, he's going to be slow as well. In other words, us three got them three, we're blocking the triangle, the same sort of technique as the Y would do on the front side. Back's got the scan. Okay, here's an example where but on our 34 rules, right, we were fanning to Will. Back had the jack. Now the jack's mugged up. Okay, here's the idea. Back sky mugs up. We squeeze it. So they're not typically blocking, or not literally blocking down here, but a squeeze calls made, okay, telling the back to go to the end man. That's what I've shown there. Okay, five down. All right, let me switch to some tape here. Show you some of these basic. What source do we want, John? Okay. You got that one? All right, good. All right, we're scatting strong. So, let me know if I'm in your way. All right, we've made Mike the call backer, okay? So uncovered lineman's got the dual. Okay, Mike is backside, so what call's made? Solid call, right? We can't do any kind of an R word there. Back's got the will. Here he comes. Now here's an idea where you see the back guy takes us, so we take him. And then the back will adjust off of us, show you the end zone. Okay, Mike's the call backer. Okay, Mike this far backside is telling me something's happening over here. Plus we got Sam in the A. We've got all kinds of things happening here. Okay, guard sitting in the hole. Tackle, trust your buddy. Let it go to your guard, right? He's not turning and getting too involved with his nose. Trust your buddy. Don't chase a big looper. Now, he's eyeing up the mic. That's his guy. The will took him, so he takes the will. Be decisive so that back can adjust. Okay, don't give a glancing blow to this guy and then try to get off your assignment. Then we got problems. Okay, and that happens plenty. Okay, I'm not liking this technique. But again, we're not chasing big loopers. You can see our guards slow down and swell up. He's got this three technique. Don't chase a big looper. We want to set the depth in the pocket here. Okay. Scat week. So leave one for the back. He's got the will. So I don't know. He may be the mic here. So we're going to be maybe calling him. Let's see what happens. All right, now we got a guy walk down. This would be a great opportunity, and I, I don't know how the communication was made here because I can't see a, a center repointing. Some communication was made, okay, to make this guy the mic and give the back this guy. Now we're going to be uh, hot off of Sam out here if he were to come. Okay, so could have been the quarterback saying, you know, left, 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 let's bring it one spot to the left. Okay, but clearly, here's the mic we want to block inside, and we're scatting weak, or scatting strong, rather. Okay, nice job by the left guard and the tackle passing this game off. Okay, we were not always very good at this palm-type stunt. Center wants to keep him off the guard as much as he can, but the guard is able to finish Okay, finish like we, Juan was talking about and give the quarterback a throwing lane to complete a ball to himself. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to leave one for the back. We've got Mike to Sam. Okay, maybe we can, we, now he's plussed over anywhere from middle. We can make that R word Rambo out here and the inside three would handle the three most dangerous. Now, the tackle needs to be involved in that too if that Mike, okay, were to hit it outside or sand. We're going to take the three most dangerous, okay? They bring them both, so we're hot. All right, you can see here they bring both Mike and who we're calling Sam, so we are hot. It is scat, and we're not getting the message out here. 
that were hot, that's going to sting a little. Okay? Now, we're hot. The quarterback knows it. The line knows it. There's no, no more calls really we can make versus the look that was presented to us. But look at what's happening inside. Big loopers, right? So as I'm coaching our guys, I'm saying you called this thing correctly. Okay? But just like you see the left guard do, don't chase the big looper. Okay? Don't, and same with the left tackle. Don't chase a dropper. Let's come back and start slowing down and swelling up. Okay, something that Tony harped on with us. Harped on it. Slow down and swell up. Okay, now the one guy here that's not doing that is the center. Okay, he's locking on a little too much. As soon as he feels this guard, okay, I'd like him to be banging back. And maybe we can bang this thing all the way back and just take the sting off of this hit a little bit. Okay. Now, whether we get that done, I don't know, but... We'd like to try. Okay, uh, this is an odd look. Okay, um, we are scouting out here. Now, this was uh, a nickel situation. We knew they were 3-2. These are our little guys. Okay, so here's our Sam, our Mike, our Jack, and our Will. This is a game plan deal. We were going to uh, short fan it if Mike was here in the bubble. Otherwise, we're going to block these two, and we'd be hot off of him, and the quarterback knew it. Now, he could redirect that call. So here we've called these two linebackers in this nickel situation. We're going to give the back the will. He'll check them and hopefully get out. Okay, so we've called these two backers. Let's track them with our eyes, which is big time in this, this odd situation. Okay, and now we're going to almost turn this thing into a slide. Okay, it, it, it really is a slide to get to our guys, even though it's a basic protection. Okay, no flag thrown here uh, by the... Um, but that could be a penalty, or excuse me, it could be a fine. I think he got a letter in the mail chopping a guy. If some, oh, he's not touching him. We're good to go. Okay, that wasn't his guy. He's just playing ball. He's got the will out here. We're handling these guys inside. Okay, leave one for the back. We're going to call these two cats, okay? Here's another situation where the... You know, the backs guy takes us, you take him. Okay? We've called him, but the backs guy hits it. Be decisive, gobble him up, and then the backs guy will adjust. Back will adjust to his man. I thought this was fun here. Okay, we've called Mike. Okay, we've called Mike. Uh, but this is one of the stunts we like we see from Indianapolis. Again, don't chase big loopers. Just kind of watch them go. Watch them go and then just pick them up as they come. That was nicely done. Okay, uh, uh, looks like a five down situation to me. I think the center's making a, a bear call. Okay, making a bear call. Back's got the will. All right, we'd be hot off of somebody extra. We could squeeze an A-gap threat. Okay, center trying to jelly back a little bit, handle games, wad them up. Center, or the left tackle, I'd like to be a lot firmer there. Okay, scatting weak. So he's on the duel. Okay, we've called the Mike. Mike's called backer, he's checking the Sam. Nice job by the center here, okay, giving some body presence, body presence, and then looking to help his guard inside. We are setting the depth in here with these three tackles, trying to make them go the long way so the quarterback can step up in there. That's in here to show you the center working there. Nice. Okay, we've got a guard bubble. So here's a picture of our short fan. On the weak side, he's the, uh, he's the call backer, but we're dueling him to the will. Taking them as they come. As opposed to popping the guard. Tackle's laid out of his stance. He's trying to communicate. Let's go, Mo. Pretty good punch by the left guard. Now bang the center off. Get him off. Come on, come on, come on. Talk, talk, talk. 
Okay, we're scatting weak. Now we've uh, replaced the strong back with the tight end. Here's that three by one set. Sam's out here. Here's the call backer. Uh, we'd be hot off a of will. We'd squeeze him in the egg gap. A little chip by the tight end. Finding some work. Again, tight end is uh, slow. He's our strong back. Now, here we go. We got the short fan, same uh, principle we just saw. Fanning out. They are bringing both, so we are hot, and the quarterback knows it. If the quarterback wanted to, and I don't think he would have here, and I wouldn't want our linemen to do this late. If these guys rocked and rolled big time, the quarterback could slow it down easy, 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 and change the point, okay? He'd no longer be the Sam. Now we'd have a Sam, a Mike, a Will, okay? And we would just slide to these guys. That would be on the quarterback. These guys are doing a nice job of disguising this, okay? You can see here, just barely getting tilted here. Barely getting tilted, but... If he saw this picture clearly or more clearly, these guys got antsy, the quarterback could do that, change the call linebacker, so now he wouldn't be slow to Sam out here. He'd be slow to Sam in here. We would not be hot. Now, believe me, uh, Byron is sharp. I think he knows what his hot answer here is, and he feels good about it. Nice job by the back, getting a first down. Good on the short fan. Show you that one more time. Take them as they come. Okay. Got the duel. Tackle's got the duel. Will comes in, so he's going to turn one loose. Same thing, the quarterback, again, and it's not very realistic that the, them doing this lady, would, he, maybe he's deep into his cadence, it would, he would have to slow it down. Easy, easy, easy. You know, right, 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 or whatever the call is to change those backers. He's fine here. He's hot, and he knows it. Good job by the center there. Okay, seven-man basic. So the backs have Sam and Will. We're going to call a Mike linebacker, Okay. Here's our two corners, our two safeties, so there's, those three must be backers. So there's Mike. Okay, here's a scan. Okay, back's checking his uh, Sam to scan. He sees safety rotation. He's ready to scan over here and pick that up. Now, by the letter of the law, our strong back, in this case our tight end, should stay with his assignment, and then the scanner would fit off of him. Okay, they're just playing ball. He does a good job fitting. It's picked up nicely. I'm not going to overcoach this thing. They picked it up nicely. Okay, now, let me back this thing up a little. Yes, sir? Both backs. Both backs have their linebacker to scan. Yes, sir. Now, if you're doing it with a tight end slow, and I'll show you a couple shots of that, and he's in the line, obviously he cannot scan. Okay, so now our, our Mike linebacker has walked out of the middle and come all the way to the end of the line of scrimmage. So we all have to be aware of that and start kicking to him, know who the point is. Okay, and we're checking Sam and Will. Our tackle's a little late out of his stance, but we're all, I think, at least trying to get to our right guy. So Mike walks out of the middle. Let's all communicate where he is and get going to him. Slow down and swell up. Chris was trying. He saw that uh, Big Fletch was laid out of his stance and was about ready to adjust. Okay, Fletch just needs to get out of his stance. There's a nice job of knowing who the mic is. So now our tackle, he know, he's got to know who the point is too. Okay? Mike's called. Trust your buddy. Okay, he's called. That means if he comes all the way out here, we've got to start banging this thing off and get to him. 
Now, when he gets them, I don't want him to rotate like this. Move your feet, move your feet, move your feet, and finish them. Here's a five down situation. It's a bare front. Okay, we're going to sit out for the widest, and, but take inside rushers. Here's the backside back scanning, or his, actually his linebackers walked all the way over here. Okay, so here's his linebacker all the way over here. We're setting for the widest, but this guy took him. So he, if a backs guy takes you, you take him. Be decisive. He'll fit off of you. All right, let me fly past some of these. John, can we change this source again? And go to the next one. Before we move on to slide protection, uh, are there any questions about what we talked about or what we saw there on the basic stuff, the scats and the basic protection, four down on the mic? All right, good. Let's move on. Slide protection. Now, we in Jacksonville are primarily a slide team. Okay, in other words, we're going to stay big with our front side tackle. We're going to turn away from where we're sending the back or slide away from where we're sending the back. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and pull all those up. And then uh, we're going to slide away from where we're sending the back. The way we communicate that is, say on jet, you know, we say uh, two jet, two to us, sending the back to the right. We're sliding away from that. Front side tackle's big. We've got four down and the will. We'll talk about five-man protection. In other words, no back or an empty protection. We'll talk about our jet. Six-man, we're sending a back to the call, sliding away to the will. And our seven man, where we can do this with two backs, okay, here's some of our play action. You're selling the lead draw, okay, our, we call it fox and hound. Or you can do it with the tight end slow. Then we would just uh, say jet stay, telling the tight end to stay. Okay, and uh, one of my favorite protections, it handles everything, it handles four weak, it handles four strong. Now we're sending the backs weak, okay, and we're adding in the tight end on the back side. All right, hot protection. What we do on our hot protection is we make it a slide. So we give them a starting point. We would like to block the, if they're bringing five, we'd like to block the five that are coming. All right, we start with the will. All right, we're going to assess this uh, slot is the term we'd say. And if he is backed up, if he's on the line of scrimmage, all the things that you determine make him a threat, we will slide to him and be hot over here. Now, just like we talked about in our basic protections, we can, the quarterback can change that. He can say, and, you know, uh, right, right, right to bring it in here. We'd like our center to recognize when he can be solid inside, okay? And then the uh, quarterback, I'll show you, can even have the ability to make him slide all the way the other way with, you know, some sort of big R word, you know, Rambo, 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 whatever that word is for you to change the slide. So we give them a starting point. Let's assess the will. So it's too hot. Okay, we're going to assess the will. He looks like we need to call him. We do. We're hot over here. All right. Now we determine that will is not a threat. We would like to be solid inside. Okay, we know teams are going to rush four. Okay, they're going to rush four, and then some teams are going to rush five and six uh, more often than others, but they're for sure bringing four. We'd like to be solid in here on that. So we determine Will. In this case, he's good five, six yards off the ball. It's too high. We know this is a two-cathy team, uh, so on and so forth. So we're going to not even call the Will. We looked at him. We assessed him. He's not a threat. Solid. We, now we call the Mike. Okay? Now we're hot off of this cat. Okay? Now, uh, again, Will is totally unbacked up. Okay? Not a threat. So we've called the mic, for example. Here's a case where the quarterback, okay, m we made a solid call. He said, no, uh, this guy's the one that's coming, all right? They bring Sam cover one a lot. He'll say, you know, an R word or Ron or whatever that word is to c bring us off our backer and turn it into a slide the other way. So we started, you can see, with assessing the will. We could have called him. 
Okay, wouldn't have been a good call because he's not a threat to come. He's not backed up by a linebacker. Okay, and we teach all of our players, not just our centers, this idea. Um, so he made a solid call. Now the quarterback has turned this thing into a, a run. Okay, and here uh, we also have the ability in our slide protection to determine when they're bringing four week. Okay, and when we do, we're going to turn a slide protection change a slide protection, I should say, into a turn protection, okay, whatever that call is, squeeze, 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 all right, so how you determine when they're bringing for a week could be a game plan thing, you know, I would leave that to you guys, but somehow, some way, we knew, okay, that this thing was happening, and they were hopefully dropping this guy into fire zone coverage, and so we felt good that when we see these things, this, this, or this, or any combination of that, we'll make it a turn. Okay, now are we 100% correct on that? No, but because we are a slide team and because we do it a lot, uh, we've gotten good at it, and our center's excellent at uh, recognizing that. And again, our quarterback could also make that call, okay, if he wanted to do that. Okay, now jet protection for us, same thing. We've added a back to the mix. It's a six-man protection. Again, we're going to assess the will linebacker. Okay. And then the back is going to duel one to two. One to two. All right, it's going to take two to be hot. Okay, now again, Will's not backed up. Uh, so we're going to make Mike call. We're solid. Now the back only has Sam. Right? Here you see it versus an over front. Three flat here, a loaded. Okay. Will's in the box. I mean, there's no assessing a Will in the box. He's, he's our guy. Okay. Um, one more time on that. Okay, you see we're sliding to Will, and uh, back's got Mike to Sam. Okay. One, a couple more pictures here. Here, just like on the hot, you know, we've determined that they're bringing four a week. A call was made. Okay, so we make this a turn protection. Now the back has got the first thing off the tackle's ass. Okay, and he'll fit up. He'll, uh, his aiming point is going to be the inside leg of the tackle and then adjust out, okay, just as an aiming point. Okay, now versus bare fronts, triple fronts, we will turn it all the time. I'm not giving away any secrets, okay, it's on tape, we do it, a lot of people do it. Again, we want to be firm inside, we want to set the depth of this pocket, okay, we got a little guy on a big guy. That is a problem, but if we are firm on these games in here, as opposed to having single blocks across the board, I think we're going to have a better chance for the quarterback to step it up and make a good read, okay, and get the ball gone. So we will do that versus all of our slides versus any bear. Okay, now one thing on that, I'll, I'll mention on that, and we'll, we'll cover this some more in our turn protection, is that when we uh, do uh, make these thing turns, Okay, we are not just gapping that. All right, we're turning to people. In other words, if this three technique loops as he will, as he should, we're going to lock on him with the tackle. Okay, we're, gonna, we're not just going to, here's a case where we will chase a big loop, but we're going to lock on him. All right, same thing here. We're going to be turning to this linebacker. If he adds on green dogs, pressure rushes, okay, we'll start banging it back to him. We're not just turning to oblivion. And that's different than a lot of people do. Um, uh, Coach Boudreau um, sold me on that, and, and I'm a big believer in it. Okay, now you see here, uh, sliding to Jack and Will. When we get a 34 front, we ask our center to make, you know, two callbackers to show both who we're going to, Jack and Will. Okay. Front side guard. Now, notice this picture. It's kind of interesting, kind of fun to do. We, uh, we've called Jack and Will. Okay, we aren't going to change the callbackers. Now, that here they come. There's a, a dog we're going to likely see on our first game against the Cowboys. They're bringing the strong safety in the mic, okay, through that A-gap. We, our guards have gotten good at just recognizing that. You know, here comes that safety down. The mic's starting to lean. We haven't changed our callbackers, but we'll ask them to slow it down. Okay, Coach Trickett, slow down if you're in a hurry and uh, gobble that thing up. So we say cheat it. So he'll cheat it, and then the back's going to fit off of him, safety to Sam. OK? 
Okay, and this works out nicely for us. Mm -hmm. Now you see here we've added a, a seventh blocker to the mix. Our tight ends rule and on this protection, our jet stay, is that he's slow. Okay, when we say slow, we're saying the tight end and tackle have the end and the SAM. Okay, that puts the back on only the mic. So we've got Jack and Will, backs on the mic. Go ahead, Fredo. Okay, flip it in your mind. Okay, here's a fun thing we do from time to time. Again, we're in that trip, so we could offset the back. Same formation I showed you the uh, scat out of. Okay, is it scat? Um, is it seven man basic? Or in this case, we are sliding to the will. Okay. Uh, one thing I should mention on our slide protections, we're sliding to the will. We are sliding to the will to whoever. Okay? If they brought a corner blitz, they know. We're going will. So I, I, I saw a sort written up somewhere in one of these pictures. So we're sliding to will to whoever. So if they bring a DB blitz outside, we would handle that uh, with our slide A gap, B gap, C gap. So it does have some gap principles to it, a sort principle. Um, okay, again, you see we're slow, we're sliding to will. Now, anytime a back sky gets in the A gap, we are squeezing it. So here, Mike uh, gets up into the A gap, we squeeze it. On this particular protection, when we make that call, our tight end is part of that squeeze, and so his rule now becomes end or known rusher. Okay, so it goes from being slow from end to Sam, okay, to have slow with the tackle, Sam, okay, to having end or known rusher on this particular squeeze call, back sky in the A gap. Any questions on that? Okay, we'll see some more examples of something like that. Okay, now it's seven man. Here's our play action stuff. Uh, you know, lead, draw, we're faking it's just the fox. Now, how much does this affect the linebackers? Well, sometimes it does. We hope it does. You know, if we're running you know, digs in here and that sort of thing. Um, hitting the tight end over the middle. But one of the reasons we like it is it's such a good protection. Okay? It's a great protection. Uh, so, again, just like our jet, just like our hot, we're sliding to Will. Okay? Now, two back, Will's going to be in the box. Okay? So, we've got him. There's no really assessing. We're going to call the Will. The backs have uh, Mike and Sam. We could do this, you know, where we put the F on the mic, or we can do it where we put the H back on the mic and then trade them and then put the F on the Sam. I may have some pictures of that. Here we go. F's on the SAM. H is on the mic. For us, this is uh, selling the lead draw. Okay, and I don't know if we have any runs that really look like this, but it's a little bit harder action, you know, both backs coming. And we are trying to be a little bit firmer uh, in the line. We tell our tackles and our front side linemen, sell as much run as you can on this hound protection, we call it, but don't screw yourself. So come off, boom, boom. Okay, uh, we saw Juan's um, short set, boom, boom, and then back yourself out of it and pass protect. Okay, don't screw yourself. This is a good picture of us, again, cheating that we call it a skunk blitz, a safety, and an inside backer. Okay, we haven't changed the call backer. Just slow it down, cheat it. Okay, uh, back sky in the A gap. We are squeezing it. Now the backs are going to the edge. Okay. Here's a, a picture of, you know, we've called the Will linebacker, okay, we've called the Will linebacker, uh, and we're setting to him, but they cross-dog us. Now, if the backs guy takes us, we take him and be decisive, and the back will adjust off of us, okay? Now, if these guys got leaning and got up into the line of scrimmage, we would squeeze it. But if they do it from off, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers style, we'll just take the backs, and he'll take ours. They kind of just fall into it. What we tell him is, be decisive. He takes you, you take him. Okay? Don't be bouncing off of him and confusing the back. Okay? He will be able to fit off of your block. Okay? Now we're sending the backs weak, and we can pick up an eighth blocker. This is terrific against a team that is going to bring four weak and four strong. Okay? So we're going to call the outside backer. Here's the Sam. Okay? We ask the tight end to check number four. Backs have got uh, F on the will, H on the mic. Okay, it's hound weak. Okay, it's built in uh, for us that the tight end is checking four. Okay, hound weak. The backs have got Mike to will, but they will handle this uh, Frank type blitz. Okay, on their way to their assignments, 
Uh, fullback stays with his assignment, and the H would fit off of him. Okay? Same thing. Uh, we're sliding to the SAM. Okay? And again, if we were to read uh, that they're going to bring four strong over here, we could turn this into a, you know, we knew that they were going to fire zone us and drop this in. We could turn this into a turn. I don't have a picture of it here. But we could do that on, on, on any of our slides. Usually a game plan thing, we've got a good beat on when they're doing this sort of thing. Uh, but again, we will turn our slides versus a bear. Okay, now the backs are uh, headed to the edge. And here, one, two, three, four. The tight end's four is now this big defensive end. Okay, so we make the bear call, he knows he's in. He knows there's a number four. Okay, let me show you some shots of these uh, slides. Yes, yes. Yes, with Will in the box, we don't come off the of Will. We're sliding to him. We, that's where we just cheat it. Okay? Rather than recall it, we just teach him to cheat that and pick up the back sky. Okay, the question was, would we come off of the Will? When he's in the box, we're not coming off him. We're sliding to him, but we just, teach, we just cheat that. Okay, here's some of our hot protection. All right, let me see what we got here. Okay, looks like uh, we're going to assess the will here. Okay, and we'd be hot off of Mike and Sam if, in fact, will was the call. Okay, only rushing three. We like that. Looked like they, they kept the point on to the will. We knew we'd be hot off of Mike or Sam. Okay, now versus a base defense, what we were doing in this, this is a game plan deal, uh, base 3-4. We were going to um, double short fan this, double short fan this, because I don't know where they're coming from. Okay, as opposed to just turning to the jack and the will, Okay, and being hot off of Mike and Sam, we were double short fanning this. This was a game plan deal versus a base 3-4. And then again, if, if your guys, if only one's rushing to your side, then we'd like to come back and crack the center's nose or the nose guard's uh, ribs. So let's see the end zone here. Okay, so they are uh, short fanning this. It would take two to be hot here. They were short fanning over here as well. Okay, good job of the tackle, trusting his buddy. He's, he's trying to take a hit off the quarterback, just double bumping him late. Okay, assessing the will. Here's a case where I think they probably came solid. Now the quarterback, okay, we would... If, if he wanted to get this guy blocked, if say we were assessing the will, he's not a threat, and I'm liking that based on this rotation. I'm hoping they came solid in here to the mic at least. So we're sliding to this mic. Okay, we know we're hot off of Sam. He should know, okay, that the Sam's coming, and he can just turn this thing into a slide to the right. Okay, and he has that ability. That is on the quarterback to do that. We, as a line, will not do more than come into a solid. Now, he wants to bring us all the way back. That's on the quarterback. And maybe he was well aware of that and decided he liked his hot option, which actually looked pretty juicy there. We just didn't get it done. Could have got a teeth full. Okay, this is a fun 
thing that we did versus uh, these guys. We knew we were getting cover two, cover two, cover two, cover two. Okay, we're running high protection. We're going solid in here. Okay, we assessed the will. Going solid to the mic. And then we just kind of lined up in this, you know, formation. These guys have no blocking responsibility. They were simply there to chip and help us against these uh, terrific defensive ends that really give a lot of people a lot of trouble, um, Freeney and Mathis. Okay, so by aligning there, we felt like they would either, you know, then rush inside or at least widen, okay, and, and give us a little more time. Good job by the center, Jelly and back. We're solid, We're trying to set the depth in here. Give the quarterback a place to step up. That's our young uh, receiver, Reggie Williams, there. Okay, sliding to Will, hot off of these two. Okay, here's some jet. Okay, so two jet, we're going to assess this guy. I, you know. With him this far off and too deep, we tell our guys we'd like to be solid in here. Hey, if they call him, that's not all bad, okay? I'd like him to be solid in here. And maybe, you know, I don't, I don't remember what he decided to do there. It looks to me by his eyes that they're going out to the will, but he may have just been helping out. The tackle may have given him an alert by his tighter alignment that he was going to pinch inside. I don't know. Nice job on the game on the right. Okay. Assessing the will. Looks like they may have called. Didn't need to. Could have gone solid. Could have been the same deal as last time. Good job again on the games and finishing. Good by the center. Good by the guards, slowing down and swelling up. Okay, help him with your eyes. Check your will or whoever your backer is with your eyes. Slow down, swell up. Okay, Will's called backer. Okay, back's got Mike to Sam. Looks like we're hot. Nice job, Fredo. Uh, the running back should be fitting up in here, Mike to Sam. Good job by the tight end. Okay, assessing the will, it's two jet. He ain't backed up, okay, so let's bring it in here to the will. Back's checking Mike to Sam. Nice job with the games. Fredo's coaching him up. Look at the big fella. Kyle Brady goes about 285, our tight end. Tough man to bring down. Okay, we start by assessing the will. He ain't coming. All right, so we come on in here to the will. Did not get a squeeze call made here. We still would have been short a man on this particular blitz, okay? But a back sky getting it, so here's the call linebacker, okay? Here's the call linebacker. Will was uncovered. A back sky getting into the A-gap, we could squeeze that, okay? Now, he didn't get it done here, so the back, we didn't get the squeeze done, rather. Okay, so that's fine. The back's got to go get him. We would have been short either way. But I think if we're squeezing it, we're going to have more body presence in here. We try and teach them how to make the calls. Give them, you know, well, what's back's guy in the A gap? At the feet of the lineman is what we say. Well, he wasn't at the feet of the lineman. He was two inches behind it. Okay. You know, I'm not going to go crazy over that. We say the feet of the lineman. Make a decision. Play fast. That's what they're doing there. Okay. Jet, now we've added the tight end slow. Okay, so here's Mike, here's our Will, he's walked, he's not backed up. We could have come in here uh, to the mic, I'm hoping we did. Uh, 
Okay, tight end's locking on his Sam. Now, is this thing blocked correctly? You know, say we, we were sliding to this guy. Now, he's the will. Does that become the mic? And then he's got the Sam. I don't know. We just, uh, we told him who to take. You got end and Sam. He determined that he was a Sam. Now he's going to fit off of that. And he took this DB as he came down. Okay, nice pickup. Okay, basically an under front. Nice job by David Garrard. Okay, you can see we're sliding the well. They've got end and Sam. Now, I think we may have told the tight end, if Sam doesn't rush, then you can get out. Okay, same thing. Tight end, checking Sam. Now, versus these guys, they're... Uh, 3-4 team, not very often, but occasionally they'll reduce that 4 down to a 3. We told our tackle just to follow the end. So this wasn't really necessarily uh, a turn, okay, by our tackle, but he, we told him to follow the end. So we said, this is the mic, this is the will, versus this 3-4 look. So you can see the tackle following the defensive end versus the 34 team. So we're turning to Jack and Will, 3-4. He's got the Sam, back has the mic. Here's a picture of uh, our sort concept I was telling you about. Okay, so we're sliding to the jack and the wall. We're running, uh, I don't know if it's fox or hound. Okay, these two got these two. Okay, the backs have got Mike and Sam. We're sliding to jack and will. Okay, and then they, they bring another guy down. We're sliding all the way to it. A gap, B gap, C gap. That's the sort concept. Sliding to jack and will. They bring will on a free safety. We're sliding to it. Okay, this was hound protection. He had the Sam. Okay, want to put our better blocker, Greg Jones, who was a beast at 260 pounds, on our Sam rusher. Okay, so we did a little motion deal. We were calling him the strength. We did some deal where we put him on uh, Kyle on the backside, but this is uh, hound or fox again, and we are sliding, okay, to the backside backer. We may have had the tight end on this. Game plan check number four. Good job by the backs, picking these backers up as they came. Boom, boom, H fitting off. Good job here, we're sliding to our guys, slowing down and swelling up, start banging it back. Start banging it back. Tackle, same thing. You see the guard banging it back? You can do the same thing. Now you don't have that guy by assignment, but you can give some body presence. Versus a bear. Okay, we're going to turn this thing, full turn. Again, you can see here we're turning to a guy. So if he starts scraping over, let's start banging it back. Good. Okay, here's our max protection, eight-man protection. We're sending the backs weak, and we're having our tight end check number four. So we're calling the Sam. Okay, they've got Will and Mike, and he's going to check number four. This was a big team that would either, you know, bring the uh, Seattle would either bring the safety on us or the free safety Will. So we wanted to have this protection in. Jimmy Smith, great receiver for us, just retired, getting shot there. Okay, well, we ask our backs versus, you know, cover two teams. Again, this is for us more than to affect the linebackers. It is more to uh, be a protection, a good, solid protection. So we asked in this case for our fullback to give them a, some sideboard help versus these great rushers again, some sideboard help outside, and the H, some sideboard help inside, and then some tight end presence. He's checking four. Okay, he's making him rush the long way but, or just uh, a little chip on his way out. Okay, this is a cover two team. We see very few blitzes from these guys. 
Uh, but they get all the rush they need out of these four cats. Left what's running it. Okay, here's our guard. Come on back, find some work. Slow down, swell up. But then go find some work. Nice job by E from Salam. Goodbye, Mo. Understanding. Sideboard help. His reaction may be to spin back inside. Good. I don't know why he pulled that one down. One more second. Here we go. Let's get the end zone. Okay. Sliding to Sam, checking four. You can see our tackle trying to short set this guy. This is that hound or H hard, you know, trying trying to get a little bit of play action. Plus he knows he's he's got inside it, you know. Backs pouring up in their inside. Go get them. And then back out of it. Now we got that guy. This was a nice job by Fred. Fred Taylor. Okay. So we've got our fullback on the wheel. H on the mic. Okay. We're sliding to Sam. Now, remember, he's got number four. Here's a good point. Four comes down. Okay. Into the mix. All right. Then we're going to say... We've got a new number four, and he can't really check him from here. So we've got to make a call, okay, a new Sam or a new number four in any way to keep him in. Stay, 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 however we get that done. Okay, so now you can see where four came down inside, so our slide is going to him. Now he's checking the new number four, similar to if it were a bare front, and that was a big end out there. Okay, here's Fred checking his mic. Oh, he tracks him all the way back. That was nice. What I like is for my left tackle to be a little bit more aware there. Okay, Khalif, young player, okay, and come off on that and don't just watch him run by you. Okay. Coach, how we doing? Okay. Um, no, let's, uh, I'll, I'll stop there with that stuff. Um, are, there, are there any, John, how are we doing with these lights? Any questions on what we talked about, okay, uh, our basic protections and our slide protections, okay? We are a slide team. Um, if we had time, we'd get to that turn stuff. Uh, and now what, we, what we're doing is we're taking our tackle, okay, on our turn protection, and we are leaving the end, and we are gap blocking that. But as I mentioned on our, some of our slides, when we turn that baby into a turn protection, we're turning to people. Okay, so we are turning to linebackers, and if they start scraping over because they've got backs in man and they're going to green dog, add on, then we'll start banging it back. So that's the gist of our turn protection, different than our slide. We are very successful with that and doing some of our three-step stuff out of our turn, and it's beautiful versus inside games, inside blitzes. Um, offensive linemen love turn protection. We did a lot of it. We were good at it, um, and we'll continue to do that. That and our slide. Um, you know, I, when uh, Carl Smith came to us in Jacksonville, he said, hey, well, who are we? Are we a scat team? Are we a slide team? Are we a basic team? You know, we were doing a lot of things uh, before that and doing them just fine. But he, uh, Carl had the idea that, well, we, you guys are pretty good. We are, we are pretty good at this slide business, assessing the will, determining when it's four week and so on. So we became a slide team um, and have had good success with that. Well, let me just leave you with this thought today, okay? We've talked about some of these great offensive line coaches that I've been so fortunate to have been around. Again, I want to thank Bob, okay? Uh, I see Steve Marshall, Bill Muir. I'm very excited to hear um, Bill speak. And these coaches, okay, that have meant so much to me in my life, okay, you mean so much to your guys in your life, to me, your builders. And it, I just want to leave you with this thing Coach Holtz used to say to us. You know, he'd talk about... Uh, being a builder in life, and he had a little poem, okay, bear with me, okay, and it goes like this, I saw a group of men in my hometown, a group of men tearing a building down, 
With a heave and a hoe and a mighty yell, they swung a beam and a sidewalk fell. And I asked the foreman, are these men skilled? The type you'd hire if you wanted to build? He laughed and said, no, indeed, common labor is all I need. Because I could tear down in a day or two what it took a builder 10 years to do. Okay, and the poem goes on and on. But the point is, you know, in this day of instant coffee, instant tea, everybody wants instant success, but it doesn't work that way. Okay, building something takes a long time. Muscle memory, repetition. Okay, you guys are builders. Okay, I hope to become a good builder myself. Okay, with my young line and my young career. And I respect you. I respect the men that have taught me so much. And I thank you for your attention today. Appreciate it.